Today, we're gonna to walk through how to set up and use my latest autofocus settings for action, wildlife, sports, in both the Z9's firmware 5.0 and the Z8's firmware 2.0. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's video. Uh, I'm just back from a just amazing workshop with a great crew of people, master wildlife photographer David Archer, Rick LePage and I, uh, in Charleston, South Carolina. And we did a ton of birds and flight and other wildlife around the swamps of South Carolina. Uh, and I'm just about to head off while I'm actually going to Mazatlan for the Total Eclipse workshop as I'm filming this, but right after that, to Costa Rica for a ton more wildlife shooting and I couldn't be more excited with some of the advancements that have come through firmware 2.0 for the Z8 and firmware 2.5 for the Z9. Uh, I'm going to use my Z9 to illustrate some of this stuff but I'm, it's the same in both cameras and I'm going to have you refer to the firmware 2.0 video I did for the Nikon Z8. If you didn't see that one you can click right here or you can run into this video's full description. Uh, there's links to everything I talk about, videos that I reference, products that I talk about. All that stuff's down there if you click the title or show more. But I'm gonna walk you through how I use this most advanced autofocus system that we Nikon shooters have ever had uh, with my Z9 and it's exactly the same when I shoot with a Z8 to the, that hybrid handoff autofocus where we go from wide area, easy to pick up an erratic, fast moving subject like a bird in flight, and then hand that object off once we're tracking it to a 3D point that'll go all over the frame. And I will tell you that with the latest bird detect autofocus updates and, and just the eye detect and tracking of this thing is unreal. It just opens up opportunities for, for hit rates, shooting complex wildlife scenarios and sporting scenarios, whatever it is, whatever motion you wanna track, this camera's got a way to do it. So it's pretty incredible. And I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna show you how I use it, how it works. And, and one thing that I noticed that was maybe a little bit of a misconception with people in my workshop who've been following me a long time is exactly how you work the buttons as you're doing this. I'm gonna really talk you through that uh, and then I'm going to go into the settings and show you how to set it up. Uh, we'll go through and I'll show you just, just what has tweaked a little bit since my initial videos on how to set up the banks on the Z9 and the Z8 when they came out. And again, for the Z8, that stuff is in that video that I linked just a second ago. And it's also in this video's full description. So, you know, let, let's talk through it. I'm going to have you look through my lens right here and we're going to we're gonna simulate a couple things just, just with my two cameras sitting over here. I got my ZF and my, my Q3, two of my favorite cameras. And we're gonna have a look through the lens of my Z9. And if we have a look at the eye menu, this is one of the things I love about the mirrorless revolution is I can do everything without taking my eye out of the viewfinder. We have a look at the eye menu. You can see I'm in shooting bank A. That's just kind of my knock around mode. And, you know, it changes a little bit. Right now I have it in automatic uh, area detection. You can see that up by the 3D. It's in 3D tracking, it's AFC. I'm at 250th of a second auto ISO. It looks like it's maxing out at 12,800. If I backed off a little bit, you know, we'd, we'd be getting a little bit better ISO, but slower shutter speed. It's just a dark condition in here in the studio with a lens whose maximum aperture is 4.8 where I'm zoomed right now. But you can see that 3D tracking, if I can put it on a subject, it says, oh yeah, that's the subject, you know? And it has the ability to detect faces and eyes of, you know, humans and animals and vehicles, headlights, all those kinds of things. And I can just fire away without even, you know, missing a beat looking through the viewfinder I'm shooting and I just get little white frame lines around the edges when I'm shooting. Nothing new there. If, however, I suddenly see fast moving action and I'm just in bank A and I don't even want to make a change, I can tap that function button I have set to recall shooting functions hold. And you can see, you know, I can, it's set me instantly up to 20 frames per second and 3D tracking and I am away to the races. Basically, you know, now all of a sudden I'm firing in burst mode. There's, a, there's all kinds of stuff going on. I'm just firing away, all right? But let's say I'm working shooting birds in flight, some scenario like in Charleston. Um, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change my, my custom settings bank to B, which is action. I'm gonna set my shooting bank to, to B, which is action. And that instantly sets me up at a shutter speed that I'm gonna want for birds in flight, that kind of thing. Auto ISO is limited out at 12,800 just for quality purposes. I could tweak that if I wanted to. 
I'm probably out in brighter conditions than I am in the studio right now. So I'm just going to back my shutter speed down for right now. And you can see I'm in wide area. That's my autofocus mode, right? I can go in here and select a different area mode if I want, but wide area is what I like to work with. And I could set it for, you know, birds, which is where I, I was using it last week. Or I could come to some automatic, like, like we were doing a second ago in my, my A bank, my just standard shooting bank. Now all of a sudden, you know, I would want to flip my dial to 20 frames per second. And if I had birds moving through the scene, it's a lot easier to pick them up in this wide area. All right. But if I leave, if I, if the bird leaves the wide area, you lose it. I can say, which of the two birds do I want with the wide area, right? If they're both in the frame, I can say, that's the one that matters to me. Once I have it picked up, then I have my lens function buttons programmed to be AF on plus 3D. So the method to use is to hit that focus tracking button. And if you have birds in flight selected and there's a bird in that, it's going to come in on the bird's torso, head, then eye if possible. And you can hand that off by just suddenly hitting your lens button and holding it down. Holding it down keeps it locked and tracking in 3D mode and you can go anywhere in the frame and fire off 20 frames a second, right? Easy peasy. It's going to track it around. I want the other bird. Boom. You can also pick it up if your bracket is over your subject and you hit that lens function button without ever touching the autofocus button. It'll convert the area in the frame to that, to, that 3D, to that 3D tracking, so the area in your wide area. And we can always reset our wide area to the center point by just tapping the center of the joystick with my, with my bank settings in the action mode. So tap, right? But I can acquire, and if there's suddenly hones in an eye, I can hand it off to a 3D point that's still going to be tracking eyes and faces, but it goes all over the frame. It's not just limited to that box. So this is really handy if you're shooting birds in flight and you need a bigger target than that little square to find your bird with, right? Or if you've got a situation like this with multiple birds and you say, that's the one that matters to me. I don't care which one's closer. It's that one that's more interesting to me, all right? That way, it just lets me make a choice about what it is that I want to track, all right? So what about the situation where, you know, for whatever reason, your camera is just not picking up the subject? Let's say you're maybe photographing a moth, and it's picking up the fake eye on the wing that they fool creatures with instead of its real face. Well, I've got several different program function buttons in here, all right? One of them, my function three button, which works whether I'm vertical or horizontal, I can reach that really easily. I used to use single point autofocus and I told everyone that dynamic area was just a terrible, terrible focus mode that should be avoided. Well, dynamic area has improved dramatically and if your subject is moving a bit, it won't, it, it, it's a little more aware and hands that point off. I particularly like dynamic area small, which is what I've got right here. And if I hit that function three button on the front of the Z9, I have it mapped differently on the Z8. I have it use recall shooting functions hold. And the only thing it does is convert from wide area at default into that dynamic area, which is a, a dumb but tracking point. It won't look for heads and eyes and torsos and faces and pick something you don't want. You can put it right over that insect's head or the bird's head in the rough patch of thicket that's confusing the autofocus system and say, that is my subject. And if it's moving, the dynamic nature of the dynamic area point will track alongside it. And if I want, I still have 3D plus AF on and I can convert. If it starts seeing the head, boom, you know, or if, 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 if it starts moving and I want to convert it to a 3D point, it's as easy as hitting that lens function button and it's still the same. It's converting it just like it did with the wide area. I can flip back to wide area by pressing that function three button again. So dynamic wide area, dynamic wide area. Either one of them can convert to a 3D tracking point as easily as just holding the lens function button. My second button, function two, just goes to a completely clear viewfinder. Sometimes I want to get rid of all the clutter and only see my focus point. And that button just takes everything away so I can really concentrate on my frame. And the top button just flips me from DX mode to FX mode, just that quickly. Sometimes a, a, an animal or a subject is so far away that it's, you know that it's just wasted space in the frame. You're shooting a little longer shot than you actually have a lens for, so why not crop in and shoot 
a smaller image and be able to really see what you're doing and what the animal's behavior is. And if your composition is good, in DX mode, instead of cropping all of the frames in post to determine which one's the best, just shoot it that way. And it's as easy as flipping back and forth. I love that they added flip from full frame to DX. And you should have a little marker when you're in DX mode, you know, that you can, that you can see that you're in DX. It's flashing in the top right, just to catch your attention. It's flashing up there. FX doesn't flash. DX says, hey, look out. You're not shooting the whole sensor. You're cropping in on the center of it. And so I'll show you how to set that all up along with one other really cool thing. So I'm not even taking my eye out of the viewfinder. I'm going to hit the playback button. All right. And I can zoom in with my settings. I programmed the center of the OK button to zoom to 100%. And there are new settings in firmware uh, 2.0 that are 5.0 for the Z9, 2.0 for the Z8, that allow us, when, when we're in playback mode, I'm gonna hit the playback again, if we zoom in and we use the rear command wheel, the one that our thumb rests on, oops, I'm going the wrong way, to scroll, what you'll notice is it stays zoomed in on 100% on your focus point as you zoom through. I'm looking at different images here, all right? And that one looks sharper than that one, so I'll hit my lens function button, and now in playback mode, I have that lens function button set to protect the image. This is really cool for the advanced culling mode that I do, where I mark the best images and delete the ones that aren't as sharp. Like, that's not as sharp as that. It's as easy to see as that as I'm scrolling through. Much faster than taking a whole burst of images and running them all into even photo mechanic and zooming into 100% on a computer screen and doing all that data movement and rendering. I can just say, Oh my gosh, you know, these are all nice and sharp. I could pick any one of those. I can just go back out and look at the whole composition and choose, right? So you're going to be able to mark which images are sharp, which images aren't sharp. If an image is sharp, you mark it protected. It gets that little key mark. And then if you choose to delete all, it'll delete everything except what's protected. Now, I know that's a strange concept for people. I have a whole video about that. But I find myself coming back from long days of shooting wildlife with 300 images instead of 10,000 images shooting at 20 frames a second. So just something to consider and think about. And it's really nice to map it so that you can keep your hand out on the lens where you're comfortable and you use that same button that you're using for AF on plus 3D to mark an image for protection. So you never have to move your hands. You can hit play while you're looking through the viewfinder and review that last series of images while you keep the other eye open looking for more burb movement and be marking the keepers. So pretty cool stuff. That's what I love in firmware 5.0 for the Z9 and firmware 2.0 for the Z8 uh, are just some of these nuanced things. All right, so for this one, I'm going to sit down, take a little bit of a load off. I'm going to flip my, uh, my screen out so I have a nice view of it, and I'm jumping in. I'm going to have a look here at my eye menu and make sure that I'm in uh, shooting, mode, shooting bank B and custom settings bank B. And what we're really going to dive into here are the custom settings. So I'm going to go into the menu right now. I'm in my menu. That's just where I was last. I'm going to go to the left so that I can go up to where the pencil icon is for custom settings. And, and where we're really going to be working in here is under controls. Okay, And we're going to do a little bit of the custom controls for shooting. We're going to do a little bit of the custom controls for playback. Again, if you're shooting with a Z8, I go through all this in that Z8 firmware 2.0 video that I referenced and linked earlier, and it's in this video's full description. So we'll jump down here into custom controls for shooting. And you can see function one. All I have to do is press it. And from this list, I'm choosing switch FX and DX. Function two, live information display off. It's in that big list of things. You can see kind of where it is. It's in the middle of the, the, the scroll. If I move my, uh, I can use my touch screen if I want, but live view display off is what I want. And then function three is a recall shooting functions hold, okay? That's where we go into that one and we scroll to the right and we tell it what do we want changed when we hit that. And you can see I only have one thing checked and that's AF area mode is dynamic area AF small, all right? So when I hit that button, it flips that to dynamic area autofocus small, when I hit it again, it goes back into the wide area that I have just by default in, in, custom, in, in my shooting in custom settings mode, in the action B settings, all right? So now, all right, that's done. We also need to have a look down here. Oops, oops, oops. We want to go down this list into uh, the um, lens function buttons, 
All right, we're gonna go all the way down to lens function one and lens function two. There's so many customizable buttons now, it's just awesome. I set both of my lens function buttons to 3D and AF on. So when you do that, it's, it's right here. It's in that list. It's near the top, actually, of our list of potential settings for custom buttons. It's AF area mode on plus, and we choose 3D tracking, boom, from the list, all right? And I do the same thing for lens function and lens function two, same exact thing. And why would I do that? Well, there are lenses that I have that just have one button, and that tends to be lens function button one. And then Nikon, in their infinite wisdom, has added lens function two buttons on longer lenses out near the end of the lens. And when you're shooting and holding a long lens, you want your hand out there near the zoom ring at the long end of the lens, balancing that weight, which is where lens function two button is. You know, if I'm shooting with my 24 to 120 for some reason and doing wildlife in action, it's only a lens function one button. I really like using the lens function button for that tracking. Um, so there's times where, you know, that's just what I wind up. I only have one button, it's function one. If I have two buttons on most of the lenses that I use, it's function two. So, that, that's the mode I actually want to be using, all right? So that's basically the controls. I also want to jump in here, though, in playback and show you a couple other things. So we're still in controls, and instead of custom controls for shooting, we're talking about custom controls for playback. You get to program all your buttons differently if you want, all right? And, and what I have set up here is that on, um, well, there's a couple things. The lens function buttons, just like I do with, it's, um, well, look, I haven't done it yet, but the lens function two, I have set to protect. If I go in here, protect is the very top option. They know that's important. If I go down, I can also set lens function two to protect. So if I'm shooting with a shorter lens, now I'm gonna have to save my settings. But there's also these wheels, all right? The main command dial. What do I want that to do? When I press that, I want it to advance the frame one all right, if I'm in video playback, I want it to advance the frame 10, 10 frames, so you'd shoot 24 frames per second, it's almost a half a second. And I want the frame advance zoom position to be, prefer the focus point with face priority. Whether I'm shooting wildlife or people, I'd like it to prefer a face, and I want it to look for where the focus point was and jump to that when I'm zoomed in and scrolling from image to image. That's just amazing cool. I'll show you another really quick little trick that I didn't highlight, but the front command dial, while you're in playback, you can set it to advance by 10 frames. That way, if you've got 1,000 frames and you're trying to get back to where you were looking through the images and culling in camera, you can go by 10 images at a time with the front wheel. That's really, really handy. And video playback, instead of 10 frames, go 10 seconds to move really fast through videos, all right? So there you go. That is really, really handy stuff that they've given us through the firmware, and that's how to set it up and use it. Um, and, you know, if you guys have questions or comments, I think one of the biggest misconceptions I encountered was the hybrid handoff mode and how it works. The fact that you have to hold down that AF on plus 3D tracking in order to get a 3D tracking point that's tracking your subject. Just like you would the back button focus or shutter button focus, you have to hold that button down to keep it locked in 3D tracking and to keep it tracking your subject around the frame. And that yes, when you're doing birds in flight, your, your, your method should be find the bird in flight, hold down the back button on the wide area and lock the bird and then hand that off to the 3D point. Then you can let your thumb off the back button and you're just holding the lens button while you're tracking the bird. Super cool stuff. Um, it, it really, really works well. Um, all right, so I hope that helps. If you have questions, you have comments, throw them in the comments section, email me. I can't wait to do even more work with this system in Costa Rica. Uh, that is coming up fast and it's gonna be an amazing, amazing trip. I got David Archer going with me on that one and a great group of workshop participants. We're gonna have a blast. Um, there's gonna be an office hour session when we get back from Costa Rica. Uh, that's May 21st, it's a little ways out, but it's an open Q&A. Anything you wanna talk about photographically, we're open to discuss. Big free group photography get together. Uh, we'll have Rick, we'll have David, we'll have Darren. Uh, and we're also going to talk a little bit about comparing Lightroom Classic versus Lightroom CC. There's been a lot of buzz about Lightroom CC. I think Adobe's pushing it, the cloud-based version. Um, I, will, I will give you the spoiler. I'm still very much a Lightroom Classic guy. Most of the people I know still are. 
Uh, and we'll talk about why, why Lightroom CC makes sense for some people and why Lightroom Classic is a tool that's really hard to replace for a lot of us. All right, so sending your questions and comments, sign up for that over at my site, hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Again, that's gonna be May 21st, 10 a.m. Pacific. I hope that we'll see you there. You can sign up for Zoom or YouTube Live. Um, I hope everybody out there is enjoying all the amazing, crazy photographic tools that we have in this day and age. They just really are mind bending. Nothing I could have imagined 10 years ago from the software that we use to the hardware that we use in the field. It's just amazing. And I hope you're all enjoying it. Staying creative, staying safe. We'll see you next week.